Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about some cheaper alternatives when working with pastels, more specifically about paper, because even though you can use pastels on a regular drawing paper, and I've done that many times, they tend to work a little bit better on a slightly more textured surface like sanded paper. But the thing is that these sanded papers can be a little bit difficult to find and they can also be very, very expensive. So you can try some cheaper alternatives and I'm going to get right to the point. You can actually use regular sandpaper that you can buy in your hardware stores. This regular sandpaper works really well as a surface for pastels and it's a great and very cheap alternative. Now I know what some people are going to say. They're going to say it's not archival and that the artwork will degrade very quickly. Well, first of all, that's not entirely true. And second of all, there's actually no scientific studies that would support that claim. So first I'm going to talk about this whole archival thing to get that out of the way. And then I'm going to do a series of tests on smaller pieces of sandpaper. And I'm also going to do a demonstration, a full drawing of this bullfinch. So about the archival properties, um, when people say that something is archival, that means that it can be, that it's made out of materials uh, that uh, can be preserved for many decades or even centuries. These are usually acid free. And um, well, uh, the thing is that we know for a fact that many, many great artists in the past have worked on non-archival materials, all kinds of materials, and their works were still preserved for many centuries. So something tells me that the conditions in which something is kept is probably more important than the materials themselves, because when something is exposed to a lot of heat or sunlight or uh, moisture, it's probably going to degrade. And if, uh, the artwork if the artwork is kept in good conditions, it's probably going to last for decades and maybe even centuries, even if it's made on a slightly cheaper paper. And if you look at this sandpaper, um, this was made to sustain a lot of abuse and uh, wear and tear because of its primary purpose. So. I think uh, that this thing will probably last for quite a bit longer than you would expect. And honestly, personally, I'm not too worried if my artwork will look slightly different 20 years after I'm dead, so I'm, I don't really have a problem with that. But if you are worried that eventually your artwork will change, will change slightly in terms of colors or degrade, then you can use sandpaper for practice, then you can do your larger or more important pieces on uh, more expensive art quality sandpaper even though I think even this sandpaper will regular sandpaper will actually last much much longer than people expect. Anecdotal evidence tells us that this thing lasts for decades without much change and the same goes for hairspray by the way people often talk about uh, which fixatives work best with pastels and some, some of the artists I know, experienced professional artists, have used hairspray to fix pastels for decades and they honestly have never had any problems with it. So uh, these cheaper materials do work and uh, they probably do last a lot longer than you would expect. I'm not saying that the whole archival industry is a fraud. Uh, there's probably some truth to it and there's obviously some science behind it, but I think it's largely overblown and that I th yeah, and I think that it's safe to at least play around and experiment with some cheaper materials and have fun uh, creating uh, some uh, pastel drawings on regular sandpaper. Now let's get to some testing. All right, so I have some samples of my materials here that we're going to work with. I have a few different grains of sandpaper. This one is very fine. This one is 1000, so that's pretty smooth. I have a couple of these pieces of, uh, of a 600 grain, and this one is pretty rough. I think this one is around 300 or so, so it's a lot more rough than this one. 
So we're going to test them out, but I'm also going to use a piece of regular drawing paper just for comparison. So what kind of qualities are we looking for in these uh, pastel papers? Uh, well, first we're going to see uh, some of the shortcomings of the regular paper. If I use uh, soft pastel or uh, pastel pencil for that matter on a regular paper, you will see that there is no fullness and the vibrancy of color because uh, uh, the surface, the pastel doesn't really stick to the paper and you need a surface that grips the pastel and regular paper doesn't do that so you have a lot of this residue uh, that you can just blow away and another problem is the amount of layers that a regular paper can take so the first problem is the fullness that you don't normally get when you're working with the with these types of paper and the other problem I'm going to try to use a little bit more of this soft pastel to cover this white area more thoroughly the other problem is uh, when you want to layer and when you want to draw some lighter details on top of them because when you work from light to dark you can actually work on these regular uh, on this regular drawing paper uh, working from light to dark is easier but when you work from dark to light uh, then you can have some problems with layering so let's try this So you can see uh, the pastel, the, this thinner line that I drew with a lighter pastel is showing up uh, but it's kind of interrupted here and there and it's not very clean. We don't have very clean edges and we're not really achieving a lot of contrast here. With this one it's uh, probably even worse. So hopefully that will be a little bit better with this sandpaper. So first I'm going to try this coarse um, 300 grain and let's see how well it grips this soft pastel. As you can see there is a lot more fullness here and there is less residue. There is always a certain amount of residue uh, but the colors simply seem to cover the surface more thoroughly because the surface grabs onto the pastel better and I can also use these uh, pastel pencils to draw some layers on top of them let's see how that works you can see how much contrast there is there and how clean this line appears and by the way my pencil isn't even sharp let's try the sharp one you can see how clean that is there's a lot of contrast and you can actually achieve some very clean edges to value. Uh, so this lighter pastel sits on top of the darker one, darker one. and uh, this can actually be used to draw some fine details and to work from dark to light, which is what you no normally can't do on a regular drawing paper and you can't normally do that with colored pencils or some other types of dry media. So that's one of the main advantages of pastels, especially in a combination with uh, sanded paper. So this is just regular sandpaper. Now I have a couple of different grains. Uh, this one is uh, 600, so let's see how that works. Again, grabs onto the pastel really well, and I think I even like the feeling a little bit better on these smoother ones. Again, if I try to layer on top of that, it layers wonderfully. You can see the contrast here. And finally, this is the this is the 1000. This is the smoothest one. I think this one is leaving just a a little bit more residue. I may be wrong. It may just a, just be my feeling, but it also covers really well, it fills the tooth really well. This surface also grips the pastel. There isn't that much residue and again it layers really really well. 
So <clears throat> all of these different types of sandpaper, and this is just regular sandpaper that you can buy in a hardware store, all of them perform really, really well with pastel pencils. So now let's try to create some smaller drawings. Uh, let's see, I'm going to use... First I'm going to use this one to draw uh, a cat's eye maybe. Let's try to draw a cat's eye on this one. I'm going to start with, uh, with an ochre pastel pencil to draw some fur, short fur around the eye. Um, just so that I don't draw the eyeball, only the eyeball, I'm just going to draw a little bit around it. And now I'm using a black pastel for this darker black area around the eyeball. And like I said, uh, the, the sandpaper is really gripping the pastel and there isn't that much residue. If you're wondering about the types of the pastels and pastel pencils I'm using, I'm using mostly Kohinoor pastel pencils and soft pastels and I also have some Contis, I think. So mostly Conti and and Kohinoor, I think. It doesn't really matter because the sandpaper will make things easier whichever brand you're working with. So I used a bit of uh, Tortillion uh, to help me with the blending. And here I added some lighter areas before I moved in with this uh, light, uh, light green pastel. And then I did a bit of blending just to try to merge these two colors together, the, the white and the light green, to make it even lighter so that I can get that color that's kind of close to the cat's iris. And I added this slightly darker area in the middle using an olive green. And then added some texture and details. And then I uh, picked up that black pastel again to add some details on the fur around the eye. And then I drew then I drew this pupil. And a bit of shadow under the upper eyelid because the light source is usually coming from above and there's usually going to be a bit of shadow in this area. I can soften that as well with the Tertillion. I just use the Tertillions that I roll myself. They work pretty well on this type of paper and with these uh, types of materials. And finally I added a highlight, a nice reflection in the eye and I softened the edge of that highlight a little bit with the uh, Tertillion. So now I'm just going to fade away some of these edges a little bit with the Tertillion and that's pretty much it. Now I can go in with a sharp white pastel and maybe add even more details to this eye. Maybe some of these smaller uh, highlights on the lower eyelid. Uh, I mean the skin around the eye. I don't really know if cats have actual eyelids, but you know what I mean. So here I wanted to uh, draw a tree, uh, but I thought that this 300 grain was a little bit too rough and too dark. So I decided to switch to, to this slightly lighter sandpaper where it would show up a little bit more so that I don't have to do the background. And now I'm going to draw the tree. <laughs> 
and I started first by drawing the tree trunk and some branches but some of my branches ended up being a little bit too thick so I had to resharpen my pastel pencil and do a little bit of erasing with a kneaded eraser by the way a kneaded eraser does a wonderful job of lifting up the pastel from the sandpaper you can clean almost all of it up it's unbelievable I added a little bit of grass and a bit of shadow under that tree trunk and I added some lighter details on the light side of the tree trunk just to make it a little more three-dimensional and my light source is going to be coming from the left side that's why I made the left side of the tree trunk a little bit lighter and I picked up that uh, olive green Conti pastel pencil again and I started drawing the canopy of this tree using a circular motion to try to make it look like I don't know foliage as seen from a distance but I've done many tutorials on how to draw trees when you draw these canopies of trees you can't just draw a large green area you have to kind of make it irregular and to break it into a different uh, segment, multiple segments and you have to add some shadow areas in between these segments because these clusters of leaves form around the branches and there are shadow areas in between and of course there's also a bit of texture uh, all around the canopy uh, which you're trying to basically when you're adding that texture you're trying to imitate the the appearance of the foliage I added some branches in between these clusters of leaves because most of the branches are obscured by the canopy but some of them are visible and then I started adding a bit more texture modifying the color a little bit with this black pastel and also adding some shadow areas in between these segments and that way I was able to uh, create a, not only a more realistic looking texture in my tree but also to make it look more three-dimensional and give it a little more depth by adding shadow in between these areas and I shaded the right side a little bit more because that's my shadow side so now you have a nice looking tree with very very little effort it only took a few minutes to do that because pastels and pastel pencils are really really quick to work with and finally as a final touch I added a few of these lighter details with a light green pastel pencil and the reason why I can do this, do this here is because of the sandpaper normally if I worked with colored pencils on a regular paper or some other medium I would mostly have to go from light to dark and erase some of the highlights but here I can just add these highlights easily because uh, sandpaper takes more layers and it allows me to add these highlights which are really a nice touch if you want to draw a realistic looking tree and I just as a final touch I added some darker bits on the on the right side now after that I decided to play around a little bit with some lighter colors and to draw some clouds first I put down some white pastel uh, just so that my blue wouldn't be too dark so I put down some white pastel first and then I'm going to put some blue soft pastel on top of that and this one is very very vibrant it's a little bit darker than I want it to be that's why when I blend it with this white underneath I'm going to get a slightly more realistic color I guess it could be a bit lighter but that's okay um, so after that I started adding some shapes of clouds using that white soft pastel and pastels blend pretty well on this uh, sandpaper but it can be a little bit rough on your fingertips that's why I recommend trying out some other blending tools whenever you can even though you're finger tends to blend better than almost anything else I guess so I softened the lower edge of those clouds a little bit 
to make them a little bit fluffier and usually the upper side is a little bit more defined and I just added a little bit more of these highlights on the left side just to stay consistent with my light source because I said that my light will be coming from the left side. So there you have it. I think uh, the sandpaper, both of the grains which I tested, uh, performed really well. And now I'm going to do a demonstration of a full drawing. I'm going to draw this bullfinch. So I'm going to use uh, this uh, this uh, this is I think uh, in a 1000 grain sandpaper and I like the color because it's gonna I'm gonna use it for the background I'm just gonna make some slight changes to it I'm gonna add some lighter tones in the lower half of that uh, of that paper because I want the upper part of it to be a little bit darker. So I started blending that light blue pastel with my fingers and then I tried some other tools such as brushes and sponges but my fingers worked pretty well but like I said sandpaper can be a little bit rough on your fingertips and then in the top part I added some black pastel because I wanted a nice gradient from dark to light and I added this darker tone in the upper part of the paper and I've cut this sandpaper to a size that is about five times nine inches it's going to be perfect for this little demonstration I also added some red pastel to add some reddish tones to make the background a little more interesting and then I uh, went over it with a large brush from side to side just to make everything a little bit more even and to create that nice smooth transition so as you can see I used the color of the sandpaper to create a nice looking bluish background with some variation and now I'm gonna start drawing that bird and I'm gonna do all of this in freehand so some parts of it may be a little bit slow and a little bit messy but it's easy to fix I think so I started with the beak and then I moved on with the rest of the head kinda hoping that I will be able to get the proportions right using nothing but freehand and this um, the head is uh, of a little bit darker color the body has some vibrant reddish and orange feathers and then, and then there's a little bit more of these darker tones on the tip of the wings and on the tail so I started uh, filling in the beak first and I first uh, went over it with some white pastel and then I added some black and then I kind of pushed the black areas towards the white ones to create a nice soft transition so that the top of the beak would look shiny and reflective I then shaded the lower part of the head and the area around the neck which is a little bit darker and I deliberately left the top of the head a bit lighter but I'm also going to be adding a bit of lighter pastel there and here I zoomed in a little bit so that you can see some of the finer work I did on the on the eye I need to leave a little bit of space for this highlight here and also to try to create a smooth transition because again uh, an eye is a round object so I kinda want the upper part of it to be a little bit lighter and to have a nice highlight but I don't want a sharp transition because it's so round and smooth and then I and then I added some 
lighter colors on the top of the head and refine the area around the eyes. The top of the head is obviously a bit lighter because of the light source but I also added some bluish tones to the top of the head uh, because the feathers they are a little bit shiny and they always reflect a little bit of the area and the environment around them so since my background is a little bit bluish I added some bluish tones in there and after that a bit, I did a bit more refining on the beak I added some uh, light uh, reflected light uh, re reflected light under the beak and then I moved on with this um, middle portion of the bird which is around the belly and the chest which is mostly of kind of uh, orangey peach type of color I think in most of my reference photos I'm not really sure so I started first with this light orange pastel to see if uh, I could get the color that I like and it looked nice with this background but it wasn't quite uh, the color I wanted so I pushed it in using a combination of my finger and the uh, tutelian and then I started adding some other tones on top of that I added some light uh, pinkish tones and I use those for the highlights and made a nice soft transition. I added some even warmer and stronger tones on the right side to see if that will work and then I ruined the edge a little bit and I had to clean it up and once I cleaned up the edge and smoothed it out with a brush I moved on with the shading of that belly and chest area and I decided that I needed a touch of red in there because I just wasn't getting the color that I saw in my reference photos so I went, once I added a bit of this red color it started to look a lot closer to the real thing and this is a male bullfinch I think they are a little bit more colorful than the female finches um, and then I added some of the uh, some of these uh, slightly darker tones around the left side and I also used that this is like a reddish brown uh, like an Indian red type of uh, brown and I use that for the right side because it's the shadow side here and the lower side is obviously the shadow side and then I went over that with a bit of brown uh, with a bit of a warm brown and that I think created a nice contrast uh, between the light side and the shadow side and I even added some touches of white to the light side and I added some details of these feathers and I used that reddish brown to add some uh, texture of the, uh, of the feathers on the belly and the chest so here I moved on to the wings and these are made out of layers of feathers and some of them are lighter than the others so I first started with a few of these darker ones and I added some white on top of this lighter area and by using just a little bit of white and spreading that with the totillion it was easy for me to create a nice uh, grayish gray bluish tone so sometimes uh, all you have to do is kind of use the pastel powder that's lying around and you mix it together with the pastel that you put down using totillions and 
it makes the job a lot quicker and a lot easier without actually having to use pencils and draw. So a totillion is a very useful drawing tool when working with pastels, but totillions don't tend to work that well if you're working on regular drawing paper. Uh, when you're working with pastel on a regular drawing paper. On sandpaper, totillions actually work really well in my experience. So I added some darker tones on this tail. The lower part of the tail, which is in the shadow, is almost completely dark, but this upper side is a little bit lighter, and again I added some bluish tones to that as well, and also to this lighter gray part of the wing. And then I decided to draw the legs. The, the leg on the, on the left, it's going to be a little bit darker. Because it's in the shadow. And then I use this reddish brown to first draw the shape of the branch that this bird is standing on. And then I added a slightly darker brown for the lower side of that branch, which is facing away from the light source. And then I kind of blended these two together using a totillion. Um, after that, I realized that I needed to make the edges stand out against the background a bit more. So I started adding some even lighter tones on that, on that branch. And I also did a little bit of a refining so that I can make it look like an actual texture of, uh, of a tree, of a tree bark. And I used a light peach colored pencil to add these highlights because that upper part of the branch, the upper side of the branch is facing towards the light source. But I also added some lighter tones on the bottom as well to make it look like reflected light which is coming from the other side. And I added some really dark tones here in the lower middle part uh, which is facing away from the light source. So uh, I shaded the branch properly in order to give it more of a three-dimensional look. And after that, all I had to do was draw the other leg and do a little bit of refining on these uh, on these uh, small, what are they, on these small feet. I added some nails using a black pastel. And I added a bit of shadow under the feet and some texture on the legs. But like I said, the, the leg on the right is a bit lighter than the one on the left because uh, the one on the left is uh, in the shadow which is coming from the, the finch's body. I added some highlights on these fingers so that, they, so that they could stand out against the background of that branch that the bird is standing on. And finally I added some sminer, uh, smaller finer feathers around the legs and around the tail and did a little bit of refining on this area around the legs because I felt that this area needed a bit more shadow uh, because, uh, because the shadow is coming obviously from the bird's body so I made that area a little bit darker but I tried not to ruin the texture of the back too much and I just went over the edges a bit more to refine them and to make them a little bit cleaner so that my main subject would stand out against the background and so that I could have nice clean edges. So these are just some of the finishing touches to sum up, I can say that regular hardware store sandpaper performs really, really well with uh, pastel pencils and soft pastels. It grips the pastel pretty well 
there's very little residue you can layer it and if you like working with pastels sandpaper is definitely an option for you I wouldn't worry too much about the archival properties many of the more expensive papers out there are not actually acid free if you test them so they are not 100% archival and the conditions in which you keep your drawings are probably a lot more important I think this turned out to be a nice little drawing here it is done I removed the tape that it was uh, that I used to secure the secure the drawing to the board and now I'm just going to put down my signature in the lower left corner and that's it so I hope you like this little demonstration don't forget to check out my other videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.